Okay, so guys, I'm going to be showing you guys my process of me turning Libby from Jimmy Be Trying to a baddie. You know, she was already baddie, but you know, we're going to make her even more of a baddie, and it's going to be in my style as well. I got the drawing cartoons into baddies idea from Christina Loray, aka Ross Sushi, here on YouTube. She's the first person I've seen to do cartoons turn into baddies. She's the first video I've seen do that on YouTube, so I'm assuming that's her idea, but either way, I got that video idea from her. So yeah, just giving her her credit. All the videos I do about turning cartoons into baddies, I got that video idea from her, so yeah. <laughs> But I decided to do a voiceover because I thought it would be helpful to talk to you guys about what I did so it might help you in your digital art. Alright, so starting off, besides the Libby pictures from Dreamy Neutron, obviously, I got a Megan Thee Stallion reference picture from Google, I believe. Um, I just did a reference of the pose. I changed a little bit up of the reference, like the legs. At first, the legs was I was struggling with one of the legs. Uh, it was hard to make it look right, but then I ended up changing it to just the legs facing forward and standing right apart, which I actually like better. So it's a good thing that sometimes things don't work out because you like the out outcome better <laughs> uh, when you do it a different way. So as you can see, I'm up here doing the deeper sketch and now I'm doing the line art. Um, usually I can just do the sketch, a hot mess, and then the line art will still come out great. But this time... Uh, I just wanted to have an easier time and to make it look better so I decided to go deeper with the sketch by just drawing in the face <laughs> so yeah um, I was like let me cut it was just looking stupid like when I was doing line art the hair was just looking stupid so I just went in and did um, some added some more to the sketch around the hair and the face and the line art came better so yeah this was one of those times I just had to do a better sketch <laughs> Uh, I added some accessories to her outfit and design. I gave her a belt because this is the 2000s. So I wanted to get like a Y2K vibe. Not like the late 2000s. That was a different time. But like early 2000s to mid 2000s. I wanted to give her that type of vibe. So yeah. Um, that's why I made the sleeves see through. Which you will see later. Um, <laughs> I, just made, I just made different adjustments to her outfit and whatever. <laughs> for the braids. After trying for the braids a few times. Um, I just decided to put a long line in the middle of the braid, then curve the line at the end. Then for the tiny individual lines, I kind of scatter them so they're not touching the other line on the opposite end of the braid. So it looks better that way to me. <laughs> and so that also looks more realistic that way, at least in my opinion. <laughs> at least, the, or at least the way I did it, so yeah. The hands, oh my goodness, that hand was so freaking hard. I was like, bruh. Like, where is it supposed to go? Like, how? <laughs> I was like, Megan Stallion, I don't know what you're doing, but I don't know how you got your hand to go like that. Because it was hard to draw it. Like, <laughs> like for real. But yeah, probably because of the way I drew the body. Obviously, it's not going to be the exact same as the way Megan Thee Stallion posed. Because it's never going to be the exact same as the original or nothing like that. Just letting y'all know. But yeah. And I'm not just talking about the hand, that whole that whole area, like the, the hand along with that arm part, it was hard to pose it. But right here, as you can see, I was just shading the skin. Well, first I added flat colors and then I started shading the skin. The eyebrows, the eyebrows coloring, don't ask me about it because I really don't know what I'm doing <laughs> with that part. The uh, eyes, you know, just that, like, I'm just laying down flat colors and then also the colors, I already laid down the flat colors. I'm also shading a little bit around the face. Right now I'm really just working on the face shading at this stage a little bit later you're gonna see that i try to add blush but i scrapped that <laughs> and i end up adding that later but a tip to shading especially like the face color is to add like pinks and reds that's in uh everyone's skin tone like in real life so if you're drawing a human it'll make it look more realistic now moving on to the shirt i just kept it basically the same but except the sleeves i made the see the sleeves um see through i thought that would be so cute or whatever i forgot to mention but also uh made the shirt kind of like a, a v but I, w I was gonna make it a collar but i forgot to add the collar later plus it yeah <laughs> it i don't know how, it would look right with the sleeves i could make it look right but yeah i forgot to add that part like i added it at first but it wasn't looking right so i was like all right i'll just fix it later but i forgot to fix it later <laughs> Now I'm shading her stomach slash V-line and all that stuff, but uh, I made her waist snatch because that's how we do over here. That's how we do this or whatever. <laughs> to make it look really contoured and toned and realistic and stuff, I put the darker shades like in the creases and all that. And then like I get a color that's darker than the color I already have, put that in the crease, and then put the dark color I already have, and then put that kind of like beside it. It didn't get like a a medium, dark, a medium, then a light. And then I get do all that, then I blend it out, and that's how I get my drawings to kind of look deep and defined like that if I wanted to. I can go even deeper if I want to, but that was fine for the style I wanted to have that in. So yeah, it worked out. 
Now with the arms, it looks like I just used the same technique, but not as deep and defined because it didn't need to be because it's an arm. Um, I just used the airbrush tool to do that and it'll make it easier to blend. Pretty sure I did the shading. Yeah, I did the shading for the arms on a different layer. So yeah, so it wouldn't like interrupt in the base color I have and it would just make it shiny like the arms shiny like that. That's how I liked it like that. Then for the hair, I just got a gray color from the color disc and then painted it on there. I don't add like a jet black um, when I do the hair unless the hair is supposed to be like that. But for the most part, I don't because you don't want the details to get lost uh, with that color. And especially since he has braids, so you got to be extra careful with that. So yeah. And you're going to be shading the hair later. You're going to be making it darker anyway. So I d you just go in with a lighter color and then you make it darker. So yeah. For the jeans, I picked this color because I always loved this color since I was little and I thought that think this color is so cute. So I used this for the jeans instead of like a regular color for jeans. So yeah. So here's my first attempt for coloring this hand. I start off with the base layer and then I try airbrushing and then, you know, just trying to shade it to make it look realistic and like 3D, 3D-ish and like, you know, how a real hand looks. But obviously, you know, cartoon style, but you know what I mean. But yeah, I end up doing this again later, you'll see. So here I'm shading the pants. The pants is so cute like that. And for the shading with the shirt, I use a pink and purple color. I first went in with, went in with the pink color. And I also went in with the pink color underneath the hand. And I also went in with the purple color underneath the hand to add more flavor and depth <laughs> and for the hair i went in with like a dark purpley for shading i was gonna go with just black but i went in with the black later i thought the purpley would be so cute so i went with that and it was an accident how that happened too so yeah <laughs> and now here's like my second attempt for doing the hands which i really don't remember doing this attempt but um apparently i did because it's here <laughs> So yeah, I'm basically, um, instead of using the airbrush, I'm going with the calligraphy brush. And by the way, this app is pro great. So yeah, I'm going in with that. And then I shaded that. And then I added like the, um, I added little strokes of the original base color of her skin to her fingers so that it's like highlights. And it also shapes the fingers and hands more. So with this hand, at first I selected that area, then try to shade it. But it wasn't really working, working out because um, it was hard to get all the parts. So instead what I did was, I went to the layer that I originally did a base color of that hand and then I selected that layer and then I put it on alpha lock and it allows you to only color the area that you colored in that layer. So yeah, that's how I shaded that hand without getting everywhere else. <laughs> um, yeah. I added two white highlights with the eyes and then I went and add like a yellow highlight to the bottom of the eyes. I kind of got the idea from Love to Draw Manga, which I really did because her eyes would be looking amazing. I'm like, girl, yes, I need to do something like that too. So yeah, that's where I got that like concept from. The two white highlights are my idea, but the idea that I got from Love to Draw Manga, she usually puts like, she puts the color on the top of the eye and then she, I guess, lowered the opacity and it makes it look really shiny. So that's why I did the half circle at the bottom of Libby's eyes like that because I got inspired from Love to Draw Manga. And yeah, it turned out great because those eyes look good like that. So I was like, girl, I need to do that too. Shoot. <laughs> also, I added some shading around the eyes and then on the white part of the eyes, I put like, I shaded the white part of the eyes as well. Then I lowered the opacity. So yeah, I think I used probably like an off white slash purplish color for that. So yeah. I was trying to add some plump to the lips with some shading, but I didn't like how that was turned out. So um, I ended up adding that later. Then I'm shading the necklace or uh, uh, they ain't choker, whatever that's called. Also added a sparkle to the necklace. Then I'm moving on to the belt. I gave her a green belt because you know, Y2K vibes. Um, Jimmy Neutron's is a 2000s show, you know, early to mid 2000s. I think it stopped in the mid 2000s, but it was like early to mid 2000s show. So, you know, we got come with the Y2K vibes. And then I originally was gonna give her like a neon shoe on but like um <laughs> i really wanted to incorporate that but i didn't put that part in there i guess but yeah so i gave her two different color shoes because i thought that would be cute or whatever at first i know i know i was like these shoes looking off so i'm gonna fix it later but then i actually like how they look like that because you know it's not that serious like i like that vibe about the shoes then i painted her fingernails pink and green and i switched up the pattern on each hand then I added the blush and I lowered the opacity. Then I tried to add freckles like a billion times and I finally got a good outcome that I agree with. 
and then um the lower the lowest freckle i have is not even a freckle it's a mole because i just want to give her a mole but yes yeah, the it's the freckle right by well the mole right by her lip I drew the lashes right on her uh, other eye, then I duplicated it and put it on her left eye because when I was trying to draw it on her left eye, it wasn't looking right, so I just duplicated it <laughs> and put it over there. Then we got the lips together, then I glossed them, gave them a shine. I also fixed her sleeve, um, yeah, because, you know, had to get that together. I also put pink at the end of both sleeves and lowered her opacity. <laughs> This is how she turned out um, for the most part. I did end up adding some stuff later to the picture, but for the most part, this is how she turned out. You guys will see why I added later. But yeah, um, get into it. She getting it. She cold, she glossy and cute and dope. So yeah, giving her, uh, she giving Y2K vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, this is how uh, Libby came out for the most part. I did add stuff later, and you'll see right here. Yes, I added a background, add little sparkles uh, that I usually do. I add like some white dots around, well, on the picture and stuff. So yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I had to bring it into the other room for some better lighting. I tried. <laughs> so yeah, I added the background, added the flowers because, you know, Y2K vibes. The green background because her other outfit is green and also Y2K vibes. I added some music. I added that like last minute because uh, she likes music. Libby loves listening to music. Um, yeah, my signature. I added the shadows. I added the, the dots that you see on her body and stuff. The white dots. That's what I always do. It's like my one of my signature moves when it comes to illustrations. <laughs> So this is the final product. I think it's really cute and dope. It looks cool and it's giving what it came to give. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Peace out. <laughs>